Dennis Corkery here, bringing a Bible blessing from John chapter 13, verses 21 to 30. After these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give the morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that, because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So, after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Now I want you to notice what can only be described here as a stunning contrast. You'll remember in the previous verses, Jesus had given his disciples an amazing lesson, a lesson in love, a lesson in humility, and a lesson in servanthood. He did this by washing their feet, not seeking prominence or privileges, but taking the place of a humble servant. And now the scene turns dark, gloomy, and ominous. The goodness and love of Jesus and the example that he showed to his disciples is now contrasted with the treachery of Judas Iscariot. And in verse 17, in the previous section, Jesus had pronounced a blessing upon his disciples after he had washed their feet. And he said this, he said, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. This amazing example, this amazing love and humility of Christ and the blessing that he pronounced had no effect on the heart of Judas Iscariot. And now in the following scene, he proceeds to execute his plot to betray the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Now I wanna break down this passage into two sections. The first section, verses 20 to 26, Jesus announces his betrayal. Then the second section, Verses 27 to 30, Jesus identifies the betrayer. So let's look at verse 21, the first section. Jesus announces his betrayal. And it tells us in 21 that Jesus was troubled in spirit, and he announced, one of you will betray me. He didn't say specifically who it was, but he announced that one in the group would now betray him to the Jewish authorities. And it tells us that he was troubled in spirit. When we reflect on this scene, we see Jesus as an island of love, virtue, and goodness in a sea of darkness and treachery. The Jews were plotting his death. One in his own inner circle was plotting to betray him. And Jesus knew that his hour had come. He knew the sorrows and sufferings that awaited him at Calvary. And being a man, a man as we are in all ways except without sin, he was sorrowful and grieved at the suffering and treachery that surrounded him.
So he said to his disciples, he said, one of you will betray me. And the disciples were also troubled in a sense. They wondered, each one personally, is it I that will betray the Lord? And it was a horrifying thought to them. And that was a good thing because the disciples, excluding Judas, had good hearts. They weren't perfect or sinless, but they loved the Lord. And it hurt and wounded their consciences to think that any of them might engage in such a horrible act of treachery. And so they wondered more specifically who it might be. So Peter, who saw John very close to Jesus, spoke to John and asked him to inquire of Jesus and ask him to identify exactly who the person was. And Jesus responded, and we come to our second section, verse 27. He identified Judas and he said this. He said, the one whom I give the morsel of bread when, when he has dipped it when I have dipped it. So when he dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. And it tells us after that, Satan entered into him. So Jesus identifies the betrayer. And it's a horrible thing to think that a person in the inner circle of Jesus was willing to uh, sell him out and betray him in such a way that Judas did. And it tells us also that Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. And this reminds each one of us that we never know the depths that sin will take us to. Sin in the beginning seems innocent and harmless. And I'm sure Judas, in his greed and selfishness, thought that it was a harmless thing and of no consequence. But as he waded in deeper, as he pressed the limits further, he came to the point of villainy and treachery. And he is now in this day synonymous with evil and murder and Satanism. And Satan entered into him. So all of us should remind ourselves, be cautious when sin begins its initial motions in our heart. Be quick to stamp out the sparks and embers of sin that ignite initially in our hearts. We must be careful and cautious to extinguish these sparks and embers before they become an open flame and lead us into the depths of treachery and sinfulness to which there may be no return. And this was the case with Judas. And and Jesus said to Judas, after Satan had entered into him, he told him, what you're going to do, go and do it quickly. And those at the table didn't understand what Jesus was saying. And it tells us then that uh, Judas went out under the influence of the devil and that it was night. And I think it's important to notice here that John tells us that it was night. It was not only significant that it was night in the sense that it was the end of the day, but it was also spiritually night and darkness. Darkness was overshadowing the scene and the treachery of Satan and his vassal Judas was about to betray the son of God, Jesus Christ. So it was a dark seen indeed. Now, what are the lessons that we can learn from this story? Well, I think of a verse in the prologue in chapter one of the Gospel of John. It tells us there in reference to Christ that the light shone in the darkness, but the darkness could not extinguish it. Even though this is a dark and gloomy scene, full of treachery and evil. The Son of God is still shining brightly in that he is willing to lay down his life. He is willing to suffer and to die for his disciples and shed his blood for the remission 
of sins. So the light is shining in the darkness. The darkness is real. The treachery of Satan, the treachery of the Jewish leaders, the treachery of Judas is all very real. And they'll ultimately be held accountable for their evil actions and evil deeds. But yet the light of Christ could not be overcome. And his victory was won, not in executing immediate vengeance upon his enemies, but in submitting to them and becoming a victim and offering himself as a lamb without spot unto God to redeem fallen mankind. Another lesson, Judas failed to consider that God knew his heart. And that's the way it is with all sinners. We think God doesn't see us. We think God doesn't know our intentions. And we mistakenly think that we will never be held accountable. And that scenario that I just described can also be described in just one word, it's darkness. When we walk in darkness, we fail to realize that God knows and sees our motives and the inner intents of our heart. And Satan, when he tempts us, he never tells us of the ultimate consequences of our actions. He tells us and deceives us into thinking that sin will be enjoyable. Sin will be, bring wondrous rewards and wondrous luxuries to us but he never reminds us that God always, without fail, executes judgment on those who walk contrary to his will and to his words. And so Judas is a very tragic, and yet he should be to us an instructive figure. So God will hold us accountable when we walk in darkness. So this is today's Bible blessing. Jesus announces his betrayal. Jesus identifies his betrayer. And the Son of God in love is now willing and ready to offer himself as a sacrifice for the sins of all the world. Dennis Corkery here. Thank you for joining me. And please remember to subscribe to Bible Blessings Ministry. Thank you.